is for class and social science and is the conclusion of the previous video. So we have started with the new chapter that is global and why, right? So in the uh, previous video, I discussed with you all about like, the administration system uh, during the time of Akbar Babu Kumayu Sanjay. Okay, now let's discuss about Aurangzeb. So we can say Aurangzeb was the last ruler, last important ruler of Mughal Empire. Okay, so after that, Mughal Empire started. Right? So now, we know that Sahaja, okay, Sahaja was a good successor, okay, sorry, uh, yeah, he was a good ruler, okay, and uh, he had five sons, okay, Sahaja had five sons, and this, all the sons, okay, they were not to become a ruler, okay, the sons were Dara, Sikor, Suja, Muran, and all So all of them wanted to become uh, his, uh, his father, their son, their father, their son, their father, their son, okay. So, among the Arab, Aurangzeb was very, very uh, kind of determined person. Okay, he was involved in the various battles also. Okay, and he has proved that he was a well administrator. Now, but unfortunately, okay, Sahaja appointed or he made his son Dara as his successor. Right. So this is the decision of Sahaja made Aurangzeb very, very angry. Okay, and he started to clear his way towards the throne. He wanted to become the ruler. Now, first he killed his own brothers, that is Dara and Murad, okay? Two brothers were so killed by Aurangzeb. After that, of this Sujar, or fled away because of traitor, or because of trade of his Aurangzeb, he fled away to Aurangzeb, okay? Then after that, he died out there, okay? And after that, his father, Sahaja, okay? His own father, Sahaja, was the by Aurangzeb in Agra court for the life uh, for a long time. Okay, till his death. Then, okay, after that, after the death of Sahaja, okay, he ascended the throne of Mughal Empire in 1658. Right. So after uh, he ascended the throne, he entitled himself, okay, as Alamgir. Okay, he entitled he gave title for himself that is Alamgir. Right. Now, Aurangzeb was so much. Uh, ambitious, he wanted to expand this uh, whole empire, okay, and uh, he captured various places of northern India, then he moved to the Deccan Ports also, right? So, if you see the, uh, during the time of Aurangzeb, okay, uh, Mughal Empire was expanded a lot, okay, from, uh, from Kashmir in the north to Karnataka in the south, right? So, all empire, uh, sorry, he has expanded his empire, and he has expanded administrative dwellers, right? So, during our present times, okay, he uh, he has or uh, he has to face many rewards and all, okay, like jars, sick, marathas, so okay, this all group of people they started to revolt against their uh, against Mughal Empire, right? Then the next point, okay, of our present, okay, he wanted to expand his territory to Deccan also, right? So for many times, for okay, many times he moved towards Deccan, he tried to capture the various part of Deccan and all, okay. And because of that, also we can say that is one of the reasons why Mughal Empire was declined later on, right? Because he has spent a uh, huge treasures, okay, a huge amount of money, okay, uh, a huge expenditure was been expended, uh, sorry, is expended in campaign to Deccan, right? So that was one reason. So this is all about our budget, okay? So, so if you talk about the administration system, okay, administration system of Mughal Empire, then of course, uh, during the reign of Akbar, okay, only administration or administrative structure of Mughal Empire was well flourished and built, right? And the two emperors, that is your Babur and Humayun, both of them were busy expanding territories and suppressing the uh, revolts and all, right? So that was the thing. Now, in the time of Akbar, okay, uh, he not only expanded his territory, okay, plus he has administered so well, okay, and plus uh, the systems, okay, the very system which he has introduced was so effective, right, which worked very well, right, and he not only expanded territory, but also he uh, united the kingdoms, okay, the small, small states, not which they have annexed, okay, so all uh, states or all regions were with united properly, right, it was not like that, uh, that some states are not happy or they are not too well administered at all, okay, and they started to revolt at all. No, during this time, okay, all the states, each and every states were 
well and instructed. Okay, that was the best point during our first week. Then, uh, during our first time, okay, it was about centralized monarchy. That means the emperor was everything. He was a, he had got the supreme power. Okay, he had got the absolute power. Then, he personally super supervised the works of noble and officials, right? So, as we have seen in the previous chapters, the previous history and all that, noble and officials, they used to enjoy the power, isn't it? They were uh, given a kind of uh, freedom, isn't it? Liberty was given, and they used to be still. Finally, they were the one who started the prosperity and they, they started, uh, for it. and then finally, that, they were the one who used uh, to be the reason behind the decline of that, that is still. Okay? So, what during Albert's time, okay, it was totally different. Since he himself used to provide the power of an officer and workers, okay, so everything was done well. Then, a two horse was been introduced, okay, that uh, the two horse that was your confidential meeting used to be in one hall, okay? So that confidential meeting used to be held only between emperor and administrator, right? So that uh, meeting hall is called as Divani Khas, right? Then another meeting hall was been also made, okay? That was Garba for common people, so okay, that was called as Divani Khas, okay? So in this hall, okay, in this uh, Garba, okay? The people, the common people, they used to express their feelings, okay? Their uh, kind of, uh, their problems and all, okay? They used to be uh, putting forward, uh, in front of, sorry, in forward, uh, and forward, okay? And they used to find the solution for all those problems and all, okay? So this was the thing during Albert's Empire. Central administrator and provisional administrator during the uh, local, local Empire, okay? So uh, basically we're going to focus on uh, Albert's way, okay? So during our first reign, emperor was head of both civil and military administrator. That means emperor is to look after the civil problem, okay, any problems or any problem related with military administration. So ultimate power was in hand of emperor. That means he used to make the rules and regulations. He used to address all the executive and anyone who going to violate the rules and regulations on the emperor used to punish that person. So that was the thing. Now some officers were being appointed. Uh, appointed, okay, and that appointment was done by emperor himself, and plus he used to uh, do the decision regarding dismiss of that uh, official house, right? So some of the officers were like your wazir. So wazir, all we can call is diwan. Okay, their uh, their responsibility was charge of revenue department. So they had to look after the revenue department, means collecting taxes from the peasants and all. Okay, next Mir Boxi. Uh, was the head of military department, so their responsibility was to look after the uh, military department. Means your army and all, okay, maintenance of uh, army, making uh, uh, our military power very strong and all. Okay, that all responsibility was in head of military. Next, Mir Sanam, okay, their responsibility was to supervise the household activities. That's your palace, okay, how to manage the royal uh, household level, okay. The next is Sada in Jaman or Kazi, okay, their responsibility. Was to advise, give advice and suggestion to empire regarding the religious thing. Okay, and plus, Kazi also had got the power of chief judge after emperor. Now, during upper reign, only one portion was given that is Bokir, who was the prime minister. Okay, and after uh, his reign, okay, uh, this position was been removed. Okay, so that is about the central administration. Now, let's move to provisional administration. Okay, then. The whole uh, administration, okay, empire was been divided into 15 provisions, okay. Empire was the ultimate one, isn't it? So, whole empire is not possible to be controlled by empire, the emperor itself, so he said, isn't it? So, that empire was been divided into 15 provisions, or we can call as sabhas, okay. And this provision was uh, looked after, okay, by your subeda or governor, okay, we call it governor also, subeda, okay. So, Subeda used to look after every, uh, what we can say, uh, provisions. For example, imagine this is one emperor, empire called it, and this empire is being divided into 15 provisions. So, this provision, okay, this one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, so all, all together 15 provisions were there, okay. And this one provision was looked after by Subeda or governor, right. So, their duty or their responsibility was limited only in this area. They cannot in others, uh, Sama, right? So that was the thing. So now this Sama was also been divided into 
uh, next unit that is district. Okay, and district is called a subpart. Okay, now this unit is also been divided into district. Okay, got it. So now again this district is been divided into Pardanas. Okay, got it. And after Pardanas, okay, uh, Pardanas were also divided into villages. So villages is your last unit. Okay, the last unit. And the head or uh, the responsibility of village was uh, your panchayat. So panchayat is to look after the welfare of village and all. Okay, so I hope you understand this concept. Now, apart from that, there were towns also okay, which was been looked by uh, by who was okay, and they used to maintain law and order of the towns. Okay, so that was the provision. So now you will see in uh, certain provisions or summons, okay, the uh, government of government then used to authorize civil and military affairs. Okay, that was the position or that was the power given to governor. Okay. Apart from that, there was another official in provision that is your divan. Okay, so the main responsibility of divan was to maintain land revenue departments. So their work was, uh, was about to look after the land revenue system in provisions only. Okay, so that is the thing. So this is the whole concept about the provision. Among these polas 
was the land which, ha which has good fertility and here Banjar was the one which has got the less fertility. So now they used to calculate the production of before 10 years of the previous 10 years and also the uh, as well as the average price of the crops also. Okay, so according to that they used to put the uh, revenue taxes and all. Okay, so now the revenue taxes was fixed. Okay, that is one third of the average production of the in the government, right? And it was not like that, that of course during the time of Akbar, okay, the revenue system was very, very lenient, right, very, very well, okay. So he used to provide a loan to the needy people or whoever, uh, or whichever, or whoever patients wants a loan, okay, they were being provided loans, also, right. Plus, even they were given, uh, sorry, the uh, revenue officers, okay, they were being ordered to be lenient towards the, uh, towards the patients and all regarding revenue. Uh, collection and all, okay, and the pieces they were been examined during the time of famines and all, okay, any kind of uh, famine or any kind of uh, droughts that occurred in that area, they were examined, means they were uh, they were not forced to pay the revenue system and all, so revenue taxes and all, okay, so that was the thing. Then, apart from that, okay, uh, uh, sorry, the revenue was been collected from the trade also, okay, since in uh, the upper side. Internal trade and external trade was being practiced, right? So, in, if you talk about the external trade, okay, the um, Mughal Empire, okay, they used to do trading with the uh, with China, Europe, and Central Asia, and all, okay. They used to export various goods like textile, copper, etc., and all, okay. Policy due to Akbar's reign, okay. So, Akbar was very, very liberal to the other religions also, okay. He never forced the his uh, subject to adopt only Muslim. Uh, or Islamic or religion, okay. So, uh, Akbar, okay, he has established a new capital in Fatehpur Sikri, okay, he has built a new capital that is in Fatehpur Sikri, which is located in Uttar Pradesh, right. So, in Fatehpur Sikri, he has built a hall, okay, where he used to, uh, sir, once, uh, once a year, okay, he used to call all the, all the religious people, okay, from different religions, okay. So, he used to call the like Christians, Hindu, Jain, Sivarashtra, and all, okay. So in that hall, they used to do the discussion related with the various religions and all, okay. And they used to listen to them, okay. Then uh, prayer was, uh, uh, sorry, prayer hall was also been built, okay. That was called the Ibadat Khana, right. So he has praised, or he used to praise, okay, uh, uh, praise one principle, okay, that is called Su Ikul, okay. So the main motive of this Su Ikul was to uh, make people understand about the universal peace and all. Okay, so he has introduced a new religious order also that is your Dini Hai, okay, which was very very important. Okay, and uh, this Dini Hai, so Dini Hai used to preach, okay, used to teach about the moral values, about the one God, about mutual respect and the peace and universal fraternity. Okay, then this religion, okay, that is the new religion, that is Dini Hai, so Dini Hai, okay. It was actually it was not a uh, not a new religion, okay, but it teaches something uh, different, okay, as compared to the other religions and all, okay. So this religion was uh, was not any kind of uh, priestly class and all, okay. There was no any kind of rituals and all, okay. So simply we can say that this religion was uh, we used to teach about the one God, okay, and about the uh, humanity and all, okay. So that is the thing. Now, now this is the decline of Mughal Empire. Okay, what was the reason behind the decline of Mughal Empire? So, after Aurangzeb's death in 1777 CE, okay, slowly, slowly Mughal Empire started to decline. Okay, right? As I told you already that Aurangzeb has spent a huge amount of money, okay, in his taken policy, isn't it? And this uh, Mughal Empire, okay, lasted till 1857 CE until. Okay, when uh, sorry, when Bahadur Shah was been arrested and was been exiled to Rangoon by British. Okay, then after that, uh, the, the the other successors was not capable okay, as compared to the um, compared to Aurangzeb, uh, sorry, Shah Jahan, 